Good morning to my Macedonia family. I want to congratulate you on an awesome year, year 2020, and we are very excited about this new year, 2021. Want to wish my family, the Macedonia family, and all of those who support us with your stewardship, with your friendship, with your fellowship and friendship. I want to thank you uh, and wish you all a happy new year. I am excited for this year 2021, not only because we have two vaccines for the COVID-19, uh, but I'm excited because we get to walk in the victory of our Lord. I'm excited to be about what God is going to have us to do and accomplish on this year. And we can't do it without you, Macedonia, and we can't do it without you, our friends, our families that support us. And we just praise God. And once again, Happy New Year. God bless you. May God's bountiful blessings fall upon each of you on this new year. We are excited. We know that this new year brings about many things that are uncertain. People are uncertain about schools. They're uncertain about jobs. They're uncertain about the COVID vaccines, if there's going to be side effects, what's going to happen. But thank God that in the midst of all this certainty, in the midst of all these fears, God has a wonderful message for us on this morning as we start this first Sunday in the new year. And that message is entitled, Fear Not. And that message will come from Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. So I pray now that you would call somebody, if you got a friend, if you got a relative, if you got a loved one that's fearful of anything, call them now. Tell them to tune into this worship service and get ready to be blessed and strengthened by the Lord. We will be blessed by Allie. She will come with a song, Faith Over Fear, and then we will be blessed with the message. I guarantee you the Word of God will not come back void. It will bless and enrich your life. Once again, with all of these uncertainties, we don't have to fear because this banner says Jehovah Shammah, which means the Lord is present. So the Lord is present with us in all that we do. And praise God, you will be blessed on today by this message. Fear not. Join us in the sanctuary and you will be blessed. You're with me 
Christmas And you hear the small scars And even in the middle I know you're there I will not fear You are here Sing over my heart Sing over my soul You're making me new You're making me whole I know that you're near God, you are here Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 15, want to look at verse 1 for this first Sunday of the new year, 2021. Genesis 15, 1 says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. The word of God. For just a few minutes on today, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, this first year, first Sunday, I'm sorry, in the new year, 2021, I want to talk from the thought, from the subject, if you will, fear not. Fear not that one, but God two. God is able three. It came to pass four. Now all this was done these small words or small phrases open huge doors for us Deacon Nash in the Christian faith they swing the doors wide open to opportunities and for possibilities that God has for us to work miracles in our lives very small words or phrases but very powerful in our purpose for example Galatians 6 and 7 says be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth here it is that shall he also reap the whole structure is 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 held up on the foundation of one word that if you take that out the whole sentence you have to throw away Genesis 50 and 20 Joseph said to his brothers but as for you you thought it evil against me he then said but God meant it to bring it to good to bring the past as it is this day to save much people alive so so in other words but God is the is the hinge that swings the door wide open to the possibilities and to the promises and to the blessings of the verse second Corinthians 9 8 says and God is able to make all grace abound toward you so so once again my brothers and my sisters small words small phrases but but they're the hinge that open door wide open doors for the possibilities for us in our Christian experience so then today as we begin our journey Deacon Andrew Williams into this new year 20 21 I want to look at another small two-word phrase that that should help to settle our spirits in this new year that's going to bring with it new possibilities and that two-word phrase I want to use is right from Genesis 15 1 that that two-word phrase I want to use is fear not fear not now we all know the most common fears among most people 
I'm going to give you 10. I don't know if it's necessarily the top 10. I don't know if they're necessarily in this order, but, but let me give you 10 of the things that it is said that most Americans are afraid of. Number one is snakes. Makes pretty good sense to me. You, you really shouldn't be friendly, I don't think, of a snake. And a snake is a snake, and snakes do what they do. So that's a healthy fear, and it's a right fear. Secondly, public speaking. Third, heights. Fourth, needles and shots. Fifth, it may surprise you, thunder and lightning. Number six, the black man's greatest fear is going to the doctor. And it has nothing to do with COVID. Number seven is spiders. Number eight, Sheena, is being enclosed in small, tight, cramped places. Number nine is the fear of the unknown. And then number ten is actually the fear of the known. So then, my brothers and my sisters, as we just peek back for a second into the year 2020, 2020 brought out many, many things, Mike Matthews. It, it brought out civil unrest. It, it brought out division in an already divided uh, 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 country. It brought out the worst in party politics. It brought to a head the ugly pulse of a diseased sore and it uncovered a scab that was simply covered up although we knew it was there all along and that ugly sore, that pulse, that poison is a thing called racism. The year Bonner 2020 brought, brought about a loss of employment. It, it brought about a loss of dignity. It brought about a, lot, a, a, a loss of life, and it also brought about a loss of light. It very well could be called the Dark Ages, part two. And to top it all off, Darius, to top it all off, COVID-19 put the whole world in a tailspin, and it changed the way we do life. <clears throat> it changed how we learn. It changed how we earn, it changed how we work, it changed how we worship. Thank God for the day that Zoom was born. So then, so then, so then, as we begin, Nicole Perry, our journey into the year of 2021, many are fearful that things will never quite get back on track. Many parents feel that once the schools do reopen, that, that some kids will be left behind because all of the difficulty that came with the whole new learning curve due to the pandemic. Even though we now have two vaccines for COVID-19, a large portion of the population are actually more fearful of the vaccine than they are of the virus. I find it ironic, I find it ironic that the fear of the vaccine has stoked more fear in the individuals than the actual disease. Even some bodies of faith and even some churches are fearful that their doors may never open again as a result of being shut down and closed for so long. Some are fearful that a disappointed, defamed, defeated, and delusional group of people will try to raise up and stoke fear in people because of an election loss. One sign that one of the individuals had as they showed on the news as he was walking down the street, the sign said that we are coming first for blacks and for Indians. And to that I simply say that hunting ain't fun when the rabbit got a gun. Some, my brothers and my sisters, are, are fearful because of gun and ammunition sales are, are on the rise. Some are fearful because of this, and some are fearful because of that. You name it, and we are afraid of it. In fact, we will invent something so that we can be afraid of it. On November the 11th of 2020, my brothers, and my sisters, I taught a Bible study entitled, Say Goodbye to Fear. 
The lesson was taken from Psalm 27 verses 1 through 10. And in that lesson, we saw that we can be confident in fearful times because of the following four reasons. Number one, we've got the protection of God. Number two, we've got the provision of God. Number three, we've got the providence of God. And number four, we've got the promise of God. And then on November the 29th, my daughter, Reverend Beatrice Orange, preached a message from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6, entitled, But God. But God's love. But God's grace. But God's intervention. Vention. So then, Macedonia and my friends and my family that are listening along with us, things might not look so bright in the year of 2021, but, but we have to remember the Bible study lesson in which I've taught, and we have to remember the message in which Reverend Orange taught, because around here, our Bible studies tie in with the sermon, and the sermon tie in with our Bible studies, and we don't preach and we don't teach just to leave it, but we actually are intentional in our teaching and our preaching we are intentional about what we do and we connect it so that it can apply to our day-to-day -day life so that when something comes up we can revert back to what we heard in bible study we can revert back to what we heard in the sermon we don't preach to leave it there we preach to live it out so then, what am I saying? Due to Reverend Orange's uh, a sermon and due to my Bible study, in other words, when it looks like hate, you got to say, yeah, but God's love. When it looks like hell, you've got to say, yeah, but God's grace. When it looks like helplessness, you got to say, yeah, but God's intervention. When you feel vulnerable, you've got to say, yeah, but I got the protection of God. When you don't feel that you have enough, you got to say, yeah, I got the provision of God. When you are fearful, of the future you got to say yeah but I got the providence of God when you don't feel secure and safe you got to say yeah but I got the promises of God so then my brothers and my sisters as we begin this first Sunday in the new year the Holy Spirit moved me to the book of Genesis the book of beginnings as we deal with the beginning of this new year and you do know Genesis being the book of beginnings that that means that it's the first time a lot of things happen and and in chapter 15 in which we're reading from verse 1 for the day there's a lot of first in this chapter first there's the, there's the first time that the phrase ever appears in the Bible the word of the Lord came in Genesis chapter 15, it's the first time that God is called a shield, Deacon Henry. Genesis 15 verse 6, it's the first time anyone is said to have believed in the Lord. It says, Genesis 15 6, that Abram believed in the Lord and the Lord accounted it to him. He accredited it to him as righteousness. So then, so then, it's no surprise for you to know that today, Delbert, in verse 1, this, this is the first time that the phrase, fear not, appears in the Bible. And I find it interesting, Deacon Nash, because I'm, I'm looking at to who it was said to. It was said to Abram, a man of faith, and the eventual father of our faith. Now, my brothers and my sisters, even though fear is a basic human emotion it is an illusion you say well wait a minute Reverend, you got to you, you got to help me you you saying fear is an illusion and it's a basic human emotion what what do you mean by that well fear is non-existent in the physical world you're saying, Reverend, you're confusing me even more. What, what do you mean? I, I live in the physical world, and not only do I know people that's fearful, but on occasions, I'm fearful myself. So can you please explain what you mean by it's non-existent in the physical world? Certainly, my brothers and my sisters, number one, fear is, is not tangible. It's not visible. Let me ask you something. What does fear look like? How big is fear? How much does it weigh? You see my point? It's non-existent in the physical world. But it exists 
in our minds, and then it is made manifest through our actions. Even though fear cannot be seen, its effects, Dr. Matthews, can be both seen and felt. You see, fear is a thief. Fear is a robber. And fear is a killer. John 10, 10, Jesus said, but the thief cometh but for to kill, to steal, and destroy. He said, but I am come that you may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly. Fear steals your joy. Fear robs your life of adventure. Fear kills your dreams. Fear kills your hopes. Fear kills your ambitions. Fear kills your passions. And fear paralyzes and cripples your purpose. As deadly as this virus is, and this virus I'm talking about is fear, it does have a vaccine that will overcome its deadly effects, and that vaccine is faith. As your faith increases, your fears, fears will decrease. You've heard me say before that if you feed your faith, your doubts will starve to death. You've also heard me say before that fear is the dark room where the devil takes you to develop your negatives. They're your negatives, not his. Fear, false evidence appearing real. So then, on this first Sunday, my brothers and my sisters, of this new year 2021, as people are fearful, as people are apprehensive if people have uncertainty and don't know what's going to happen i i want to provide you with a biblical hope and i want to encourage you with a small two-word phrase fear not <clears throat> as our text opens abram had a lot of things on his mind he had left his country and he had left his kin and he had left his father's house. You remember God came to him and said, Abram, I, I, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your seed as the sand of, of the earth, Abram. But in order for me to bless you, you you've got to cut the umbilical cord. You, you've got to separate from your father. Because at this time, Abram's father, Terah, worshipped idol gods. Also, at this time, whatever the father said, that's the direction you went. So God couldn't have Abraham disobeying his father and worshiping idol gods. So what God said is, I can't have you walking in disobedience. But what I can do is separate you from your father so you don't have to worship worship the false gods that your father worshiped because I want to do something with you and I got to get you away from the folk that don't think like you and my brothers and my sisters in this year 2021 if you really want the hills uh, 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 the silver and the gold if you really want the land that's flowing with milk and honey God told me to stop by and tell you you gonna have to get rid of some people you gonna have to stop going to some places you gonna have to get a different set of friends you gonna have to walk with folk that walk by faith and not by sight you gonna have to leave those folk if you want to get what I got for you in the promised land Abraham he, he was told to leave everything that he knew he was promised descendants as the sand of the sea but Abraham is still childless and at this time Sarah's womb is barren like the restaurants is closed, or it was closed. Abram's fear, Mike, stemmed from the fact that God didn't seem in a hurry. No, he didn't seem in a hurry at all. Abram probably thought to himself, he said, wait a minute. Because see, when we first met Abram, he's 75. And now we meet Abram again, he's 85. And Abraham is only getting older and not getting younger. And his biological clock is ticking and he was promised a son. So Abraham must have thought to himself, said, now God, now, now God, please don't get mad at me. But, but now, uh, how much longer do I got to wait? I'm already an octogenarian. I'm already 85. They ain't made Cialis and Viagra yet. 
So what? I'm 85. I mean, what's a brother to do? Ain't no broccoli I can eat. God, God, why are you delaying? God, have you, have you changed your mind? I know you are immutable and cannot change, but have you changed your mind? Have I and Sarah done something wrong? Abram, after all, my brothers and my sisters, he had just come off of a victory with the kings of Shinar, Elisar, Elam, and Goya. When he rescued his nephew Lot with 318 of his trained men. And watch this now. And since God knows our every thought, even though those thoughts are unexpressed, God addressed Abram's thought. Although Abram never said it, Abram thought it. And God knows our thoughts. God knew what he was thinking. So then God tells Abram, he says, Abram, I know you haven't said it, but I can read your mind. He says, Abram, don't worry, fear not. And then he goes on, Quentin, to give him three reasons not to fear. And they're all in the verse 1 of chapter 15. He said, first of all, the reason you don't need to fear not, watch this. Because I am. I am. But well, that's kind of a strange reason to not fear. I am. You see, I am is the name by which God wished to be known and worshipped in Israel. This name, I am, expressed his character as the dependable, faithful God who desires the full trust of his people. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Am always is. In other words, God is and is is always present. Let me help you. God was not a high tower in the Old Testament, God is a high tower in the midst of a storm. Presently, right now. God is a bridge over troubled water. God is a way out of no way. God is a son. God is a shield. God is a doctor in a sick room. God is a lawyer in the courtroom. God is a father to the fatherless. God is a mother to the motherless. God is a friend that sticketh closer to a brother. Why do you think David said, I'm not worrying. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade. The Lord is my king. The Lord is my Messiah. The Lord is my peace. He is my joy. He is my power. He is my purpose. God is. I didn't say God was. Was is past tense. God is which means God is presently all those things. What God is saying to Abram and what he is saying to us when he says that Abraham don't fear because I am, he's saying that when we come to him, he will be everything that we need him to be at the exact moment, we need him to be it. Why do you think he said, I am? In other words, Macedonian, my friends, what, whatever your 2021 20, fears are, God is saying, don't worry, for when you are weak, I am your strength. Don't worry when you're fearful, I am your courage. Don't worry when you are sick, I am your health. Don't worry when you are bound, I am your deliverer. Don't worry when you are guilty, I am your forgiveness. Don't worry when you are hopeless, I am your hope. Don't worry when it feels like you lack it. I am your supply don't worry when you feel defenseless I am your defender don't worry when you get sad I am your joy don't worry about the future being uncertain I am your future God said I am whatever you need when you need it and I will never run out of it because I am and am always is 
I am the all-sufficient God for every crisis in every circumstance. What is God saying? God is saying, look, by saying, I am. He said, look here. He said, there ain't a problem that, that I can't solve. There ain't a mountain that, that I can't move. There ain't a disease that, that I can't cure. There ain't a bruise that I can't heal. There ain't a mouth that I can't feed. There's not a, a bruise that I can't heal. There's not a mouth I can't feed. There's not a soul I can't save. There ain't a life I can't change. There ain't a puzzle I can't solve. I am God Almighty. I am and I is. And as long as I is, I am. So God says, Abram, even though you hadn't said it, it's written all over your heart. And the Bible said God knows the thoughts and the heart of man. So he says, first of all, Abraham, I am. I am what God? He said to Abraham, first time he's used, he said, Abraham. He said, I am thy shield. Thy shield. It's in the text. It's right there. He said, fear not, Abram. For I am, then he says, thy shield. Now, please, my brothers and my sisters, do not think of this shield as a small piece of something that only covers the chest area. No. You've got to think in terms of a shield that stretches from the head all the way down to the feet. So in other words, Delbert, this shield completely covers you, covers your whole body, every part of your body. Such a shield offers complete protection against every attack of the enemy. Now, my brothers and my sisters, <coughs> to call God our shield, it means two specific things. Number one, it means he protects us in times of doubt. And secondly, it means he rescues us in times of danger. God Almighty, God Almighty, God Almighty. Look at what the shield does. It protects us in times of doubt and it rescues us in times of danger. Note the text, my brothers and my sisters. Note the text. Note that God did not say, I will give you a shield. Uh-uh. Henry, Sister Ron, that ain't what he said. Instead, he says, I am your shield. This shield cannot be penetrated. And watch this. This shield is not as strong as God. This shield is God. Lord have mercy, Jesus. God Almighty, Jesus. Psalm 119, 114, the psalmist said, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. My brothers and my sisters, the cloud by day, that was nothing other than God shielding the children of Israel from the Egyptians. The fire by night, that was nothing but God shielding himself from the Egyptians to God's people, the Israelites. You remember when Goliath came to fight David, the text said David looked at him and said, Mr. Goliath, he said, I see that, that, that you coming against me and I see that, that you got a sword in one hand and I see you got a, a, a shield on and a shield in the other hand and I see you got straps of brass and iron all over yourself and I, I see your coat of mail and, and I see the protection that you think you got. He said, but let me tell you something, Mr. Goliath. I'm coming to you not in the name of Jesse, not in the name of Saul, not in the name of any one of the people of Israel, but I am coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. In other words, David said, I don't need man-made material like you got to come me I'm covered by Almighty God he's my shield and he's going to deliver your head into my hands this day and you can't penetrate my God because he's El Macadesium he's the breasted one he's the Almighty one and nothing can penetrate my God's protection or his power and his purpose and God said no man should fail on the throne of Israel and this day God is going to have the carcasses of the air to come and eat your flesh because boy I'm about to kill you <clears throat> my brothers and 
my sisters, in, in Babylon, in the fire of furnace. Look now, it wasn't the fire that couldn't burn Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. It was that the fire couldn't burn their shield, which was God himself. It wasn't in the lion's den that the lions couldn't eat up Daniel. The lions didn't have strong enough teeth and jaws to eat up the shield that was covering Daniel. And God Almighty is the one that covered them. You know, remember, if you watch Good Times, you remember that every time J.J. would get into a scuffle and the people would be throwing them back and forth, all of a sudden James, his father, would come to the rescue and he would take J.J. and throw him behind him and he would stand in front of him. In other words, he was telling them, you can't get to my son and Unless you come through me. I remember my father and my brother. When things got tight when I was small. If something dangerous started to happen. He would say get behind me boy. What daddy was saying. Don't worry son. It may be danger ahead. But I'm going to act as your shield. They've got to go through me. My brother would get in front of me. Don't worry. King, they got to come through me. I'm God. I, I'm glad I got an elder brother. That's got more power than my father. And more power than my brother. He's got all power. He's omnipotent. He can can do everything and fail he's everywhere present at the same time he knows everything and when trouble rise he says Timothy get behind me I am your shield and I am your protection so he tells Abram he says Abram I I am thy shield he he's going to protect us in times of doubt and then he's going to rescue us in times of danger and thirdly he says the reason Abram I'm telling you not to fear not only I am, not only am I thy shield. He said, but Abram, the third reason you don't need to fear, because I am thy exceeding great reward. God Almighty. It's right there in the text, y'all. I ain't making it up. He said, fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now this promise, Joshua, this promise, Jada, this promise, Nicole, this promise, Ollie Jr., this, this promise, Uncle Ollie and Aunt Phyllis and Cousin Angela in Virginia, this, this promise is especially significant in view of the fact that Abram just refused a reward from the king of Sodom. He offered Abraham a reward. Abraham said, no, I can't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't take this. But what God was telling Abram, he said, Abram, it was, it was very, very godly of you that, that, that you wouldn't take the king's reward because you didn't want anybody saying what they did for you or what they got you out of. He said, Abram, since you trusted me, and since you didn't take his reward, he said, God Almighty, God Almighty. He, he said, Abram, he said, I'm not going to give you a reward. He said, Abram, I am your, not reward, I am your exceeding great reward. He said, well, what's that got to do with 2021? And what's that got to do with being fearful? God said, look. He said, I know the $600 stimulus really ain't enough to even buy gas and paper towel. He said, but I don't want you too long looking at that stimulus. He said, I want you to look at the one who stimulates you, and that's me. He said, don't worry. He says, you got to remember what David said. I know people are being furloughed. I know people are being put out. I know people are losing jobs. I know this is happening. I know restaurants are closing. I know churches are closing. I know businesses are closing. But God said, you got to remember what David said. David said, Psalm 37, 25, David said, look, I am now old. I have been young and am now old. Yet have I never seen the righteous forsaken and his seed 
need never begging bread. God said, you don't have to worry. I'm not going to give you a reward. I'm not going to give you 600 anything. He said, I am your seeding great reward. And watch this now. Since I am your reward, whatever you need, baby, don't worry. I got it. He said, if you're hungry, I'm the bread of life. If you're thirsty, I'm the water of life. If you're sick, I'm a doctor. God said, if you got bruises, I'm a bomb in Gilead. God said, once you got me, you got everything that you need because I got it. Why do you think I told Moses when Moses said, God, when they asked me your name, what should I tell them? He said, Moses, I'll be here all day trying to tell you who I am. You should to tell them I am. I'm giving you a blank check and you write in there whatever you need. I am that. If you need peace, I am that. If you need joy, I am that. If you need finances, I am that. If you need warmth, I am that. If you need light, I am that. If you need heat, I am that. If you need a friend, I am that. If you need a father, I am that. If you need a mother, I am that. I am your exceeding great reward. God, I thank you for being my award, for being my exceeding great reward. You said in your word that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And God, I I thank you that I don't have to fear because you didn't fear that cross called Calvary. The Bible said you set your face like a flint and you went to that hill there father and you took nails for me in your hand. You took nails for me in your feet. You took a spear for me in your side. You let him crown you with 72 stones and you died father and you went down in a watery grave but three days later I thank God that my reward rose from the dead, stood on resurrection ground and declare I got all power power to overcome your fear power to overcome your apprehension I got power to walk with you power to talk with you thank you Jesus thank you that we don't have to fear thank you that you said fear not fear not small words Small phrases, but they open the doors huge and wide for us to live in the possibilities and the promises of God. So with all the stuff, with all the talk, with all the rhetoric, people wondering, is this going to happen? If I get the shot, is this going to happen? If I don't get the shot, it's just going to happen. What about the pro proud boys? What about these boys? What about that boys? What about Trump? What if he don't leave? Or what if God has said, look, just as I told April, fear not, because I am. I'm your shield, and I'm your exceeding and great reward. There may be someone that's, that's listening. And you say, well, I don't know God like Abraham knew him, so am I covered? Well, if you started this message and you wouldn't cover you, we are now enrolling you so that you can have coverage. And here's the great thing about it. The premium has already been paid. You don't have to make monthly payments because Jesus paid it once and for all when they died on Calvary. After we repent, which is to turn from our wicked ways, our selfishness, and then we turn to the Savior, to Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, then shall believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead. It said, thou shall. Two other words, small words, big meaning. Thou shall be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Please ma'am, please sir, if you've done that, please simply call us. We want to pray for you, we want to pray with you, we want to lead you and guide you. It doesn't have to be Macedonia. 
to a church that teaches and preaches the Bible. So you can grow up in your salvation and you can work out what Jesus has worked in. Thank you. God bless you. We praise you. This is the first Sunday. And what we want to do to all of our members and friends, those that are celebrating birthdays in January, we want to give you a special shout out, birthday shout, happy birthday to all those that will be having birthdays this January. God bless you. Praise God for you. We've got some great things in store and you'll be hearing more about them for what God is going to do with us in this year as we continue to glorify him as we continue to save souls and change lives it is the first sunday and customarily that's uh, when we carry out the lord's supper holy communion or the eucharist if you will god gave the church two ordinances one being baptism and the other being communion and he says this do which is a command it's not a suggestion so it's actually wrong for us not to do what God has told us to do. So then, today, my brothers and my sisters, right now, if you will get your communion, if you will get your bread, if you will grit your cracker or your piece of whatever it is, we are full aware that whatever we have, be it a wafer, be it a cracker, be it a piece of bread, we are fully aware that whatever we have is a symbolic re representation. It is not the actual body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We don't believe in the doctrine of transubstantiation. This does not become his body. It's symbolic. As the wine or the juice or the Kool-Aid or the water or the milk, whatever you have, the lemonade. It's, it, it's not the blood of Jesus. It's symbolic. So we're going to use these symbolic representations to remember and obey our Christ. Right now, I would ask that you would clear your minds of everything and that you would focus your mind on Jesus. For that's the only requirement. Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. If you had to be perfect, would none of us take it? It has nothing to do with perf being perfect. It has to do with the one that perfected us by dying for us on Calvary. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you uh, for another year Thank you for this great first Sunday in this new year where you encourage us through your word to fear not. We thank you, Father, for being I am. We thank you for being our shield. We thank you for being our exceeding great reward. Now, Father, we come to carry out an ordinance in which you instructed us. On that night in which you was betrayed, you took bread and broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body. Likewise, you took the cup and passed it. You said, drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament for the remission of sins. Father, we pray now that you would change this bread and this liquid, whatever we have, from a carnal use to a spiritual use. As we look back on Calvary and as we look forward to taking it with you and doing the kingdom. Bless it. Keep us as our minds are stayed on you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we all eat together? Shall we all drink now together? The Bible says that after they ate and drank, they sang a hymn and they went to the Mount of Olives. Kennedy, my daughter, we have not yet a Mount of Olives to go to. But we're going to consider ourselves dismissed. God bless you. Praise God for each and every one of you. We will see you on Wednesday as we kick off our first lesson in this new year. And it will be dealing with our theme. And I will be sharing more of that, the theme on Wednesday in our teaching hour. It's from the book of James. And it's the marks of a mature faith. The marks of a mature faith and I will be sharing those marks with you on Wednesday 
as we launch out and kick off this whole month's lessons our Bible study lessons as well as our sermons will all be dealing with faith as we launch out in this year of 2021 you'll be blessed God bless you we'll see you Wednesday at noon praise God for you have a blessed blessed rest of this first Sunday and a blessed blessed rest of this new year and remember we don't have to fear because God is I am God bless you thank you Thank you.